Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Star Citizen Alpha 3.4 is out to the Eva Carti. 3.3.7 is now live. So let's talk about the 3.3.7 in a sort of semi state of the game and what needs to be fixed for 3.4 for us to have a good Star Citizen Christmas. That 3.3.7 patch had a very quick PTU phase and then went straight out to live. If you're interested in those patch notes, which are the same for the PTU and live build, uh, and you want to see them in a bit more detail, or you want to see what's actually going to be in 3.4 in a bit more detail, then please check out my videos linked below. The 3.3.7 patch addressed some issues and bugs and removed the expo area and that content from the build. For the most part. It reset Alpha UEC and Alpha UEC purchases and actually this is one of the major things I wanted to talk about. The current economy and progression cycle does allow for purchase of ships and items with in-game Alpha UEC. These ships that you purchase are covered by insurance and you can reclaim them so effectively you have them on your account until there is a reset. Those resets happen currently at least once every three months with major patches, or at least they're supposed to, but we often see minor patches also resetting progress, meaning that you can have those purchases reset pretty much at any time. Yes, the game is in alpha, and I understand that they're tweaking their databases and they need to see progression times and that sort of stuff, but it would be much better, but in my opinion, at the very least, if these resets happened a lot less frequently, or if they ported the databases over in regard to Alpha UBC and purchases, reputation actually would be useful as well, so I could continue my mission sets. They have talked about ship purchases that are in-game now at Teaches and Levski and New Deal and Norville, and those prices that they've got for ships are priced towards what they envision final prices being at sort of like the, the start of full persistence. So they've put that in now, but in the meantime, they're going to be looking at ways of accelerating the way of earning Alpha UEC for missions, potentially. Actually, this is one of the things. Missions in game frequently get bugged out with NPCs or mission givers becoming unresponsive, but some of the more combat orientated missions, like the mercenary ones, you can get a good run at these. You can do a lot of these missions now, at least I can without any problems. These can actually lead on to more profitable missions that I find easier to complete for bounties and to kill targets and that sort of stuff as well. So uh, that was actually pretty cool. There's no way of sharing, well, not properly natively supported sharing missions with friends and Alpha UEC with friends other than creating a service beacon at the moment and then sort of like going, I'm going to pay you to be my escort or um, I'm going to pay you to take me in your ship from here to here. So you sort of like can give uh, money to friends like that. But the other ways to make money at the moment are cargo hauling with ships up to constellation size. You want to sort of like take Widow the drug from Jump Town on Yella to Grim Hex or one of the other locations. This is actually a very good um, amount of money that you can make in the medium to smaller size ships. And it's an interesting gameplay loop this is produced as well because you get people now quite heavily pat patrolling that Jump Town location looking to prevent players trading drugs or loot remnants of ships. This does add a lot more risk reward element uh, that I was actually looking for in the verse at the moment and makes people call for escorts and backups and that sort of stuff with service beacons. It makes people work as part of a team or risk getting shot. I've seen players threaten to destroy ships around Jump Town that are on the ground unless you pay them to be your uh, escort or pay them some Alpha UEC via the service beacon mechanic. So it's adding some interesting gameplay there, something that was much needed in my opinion. Uh, large haulers, though, can make bank from trading a range of goods from one place to another. Although I've been moving iodine, um, ultratoxin, agricultural supplies, and I think beryl in my caterpillar to get very good alpha UEC profits to uh, various stations. But as I said, that requires a larger hauler to be effective. Mining seems to be extremely low risk at the moment with very high rewards, in my opinion, but obviously you need a prospector there. And that is one of the ships that you can buy in game now, but for 1.6 million Alpha UEC, which is one of the reasons you need to grind that money in the first place. Yes, you might find a rock that is hard to crack in space while mining, 
but I actually find blowing some of them up on purpose with the laser, uh, from a distance in space anyway, and you still get those delicious loots if you're willing to, to fly around and collect it. It's not going to be the, the same amount you'd get if you did it correctly, but Agrisium is pretty much pay dirt for mining, and that's the sort of stuff you want to be looking for. There are some other profitable materials that you can find, and sometimes it's worth just filling your cargo hold um, when you're near full with just any trash asteroid that's nearby uh, before going back. But the mechanic is very hands-on with mining, which I really like. It means you can't AFK mine. Um, some people will see it as boring. Don't mine then. This is the mechanic. It's going to get um, a lot of polish. It's going to uh, get a bit more in-depth, I suspect. Um, stuff that you might be able to fly out and mine bits by hand or attach bits on asteroids um, to, to make it easier to mine and, and things like that. But uh, the core of the mechanic is a hands-on, simple mechanic for mining. With the selling of all these resources, there are artificial limits set on the amount that they um, will purchase at once from like NPC vendors, which is reset every minute, it seems. It seems like an odd mechanic, but obviously it's a placeholder or meant to prevent exploiting crazy prices or whatever. But that does need to change, in my opinion. I'm going to link Texas Skull's trade app that he made so that you can help plan your own routes and see what the prices are for all these different materials. It's pretty damn useful and will save you a lot of time. Multi-crew's in an okay place. It's very basic at the moment, but it sort of works. If players organize big fleet battles with uh, like hammerheads and fighters fighting, that works pretty damn well at the moment. The turrets um, are the main part of this, I suppose. The gyro stabilization and those higher frames really makes manned turrets now viable. They still need a lot of work though. Their movement and tracking is still too slow for uh, attacking faster ships. And in general, all weapons need a balance pass. A lot of ships can benefit from a co-pilot now, doing uh, stuff with the power and the shields and that sort of jazz too. This will get more and more involved as they add more to it, but it is working, um, at least in part. We are waiting for that new flight model though, and this has caused a lot of short-term focus to shift to object container streaming performance, getting missions and NPCs working, getting 3.3s and 3.4s branch really polished, at least hopefully. I am disappointed that the flight model has been moved to 3.5, but the focus of getting these quality of life improvements in for 3.3, 3.4 is very important as well, assuming that they do get everything working and in a good place for that. But with that new flight model coming uh, March 2019 at the moment, we should start to see a huge amount of balance and weapon passes and stuff like that to get weapons and ships all at the sort of right performance levels and uh, times to kill should be rising for larger ships, things like that. I am impressed with the performance, stability and frame rates in 3.3.7. They seem slightly better to me overall from 3.3.6. Lawville does seem as well to have a bit more of a normalized, less hitchy frame rate especially when landing and spawning. I am still not used to these high frame rates yet, so I'm going to enjoy and comment on them until I start taking them for granted. VoIP and FOIP work inconsistently, which is a shame because these features are really fun when they do work well and actually do add uh, quite a lot of reason to group up and ease of access to do stupid stuff. It, it just needs to work, basically. These, these features just need to work consistently. Combat AI were working a bit better in some of the missions in 3.3.7, though sometimes they go derpy still. NPCs walking around still do odd things. NPCs become unresponsive. Missions largely don't work, though, as I said, some do. At the moment, there's no reason, in my opinion, to make any money in 3.3.7, as 3.4 is literally right around the corner, unless you're doing it to test um, or work out how mechanics work practice doing things efficiently. Actually, I take it back. There's a lot of reasons to make money in the Persistent Universe, um, even in 3.3.7, just to, you know, play and test the game. That's what we're supposed to be doing in this alpha stage. It's just anything you purchase will reset probably within the next couple of weeks. So gameplay loop-wise, we've got a large range of missions, though a lot of them do bug out and become uncompletable. I do recommend those mercenary ones, though. Missions aren't locally hooked up for Hurston or its moons, so... This makes that entire section of space a tourist attraction, really. So you can't really generate money in Alpha UBC or progress from going there. I suppose you can you can buy stuff in the shops. 
Lawville and Hurston, they're very pretty. They are a must-explore destination. And if you're testing the stuff out in the alpha, you have to go there. You have to go have a look around. The moons are great. It, it is awesome to land at the spaceport there, travel around by train, visit New Deal uh, or the shops in the L19 Workers District and go out to the various biomes of Hurston, the savannah, uh, which does have some very lush forest type areas. There are lakes, seas, wastelands, mostly wastelands actually, uh, trash areas, acidic areas, mined out places, and underground facilities. But we still need scramble races, missions, trade outposts, all hooked up to be a proper addition to the Stanton system. We need things to do there beyond just having a look. But I am very surprised that Lawville and Hurston all work pretty damn well like really well in fact the, the starport works um you can land you can take off and um, the frame rates are a bit low when you're landing and taking off from that starport admittedly but everything just seems to work pretty well the, the trains don't implode the, the npcs are super derpy the, the npcs walk around they double spawn sometimes they all appear on the tracks they need to get that sorted definitely but uh 3.3.7 is an odd one for me because it's a good patch and star citizens in quite a good state but there's way too much stuff not hooked up or, or the missions aren't working for a, lot, for a lot of them. And really, I recommend players wait for 3.4 to be on the PTU or live. And like Hurston's, all its missions, all of that to be like hooked up properly. The accessibility to the missions we already have in game to actually work without the NPCs becoming unresponsive. I'd, I'd wait before you download, especially if you have download limits. That's all I'm saying. 3.4, hopefully... Should address all of that and it should do because that should be the main thing that cig are focusing on for that patch 3.4 is currently in eva Carti and should be coming to a wider ptu as early as the end of next week it is basically an extension of the 3.3 branch now heavily focusing on getting missions in and working across the current gameplay area and a huge range of quality of life fixes that should mean with that 3.4 patch the star citizen is in a very playable state or at least that is the hope they need to get those missions in and the current ones working no more unresponsive npcs and uncompletable missions please i know i kept on saying that during this video but it is so important secondary to that in my opinion is getting rentals or ways of earning alpha uec to buy ships in that would be really really good uh, getting the combat ai uh, working both on the ground and in space to a good level i mean obviously we want them just working but the more difficult they are the kind of better for me now um that might not be everyone's cup of tea though so tell me what you think of 3.3.7 have you played it um, have you found your own gameplay loops? Are you playing with an organization that plans their own things? So you're like, well, I don't really do um, most of the mission stuff. We just play our own sort of game that we've we've decided and we've worked out. Or are you focusing on scramble races, which are actually um, were in a quite a good state when I was playing them? Are you unable to do anything because you want to complete non-combat missions? Whatever your thoughts or experiences, I'd like to hear from you in the comments below. We will be giving away another Saber Raven with a CitizenCon digital goodies pack. All you need to do is be subscribed to my channel and comment on any of my videos in December to be in for a chance of winning. And some other giveaways may appear and some other stuff uh, along the month, but I will inform you when that happens. If you are considering getting or upgrading your gaming PC for Star Citizen or any other game for that matter, instead consider the Shadow Cloud Gaming Service. It's a subscription-based service that leverages your internet connection to turn any appropriate device, whether it be an old PC, smartphone, tablet, and more into a powerful Windows 10 gaming PC. It's been working well in the latest 3.3.0 PTU patch of Star Citizen. I'm going to try and maintain a best practices guide on my website as well. More information is available in the links below, and if you do decide to try it, use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the verse.